Hey everybody, Mark Lukia here from Redline Conditioning and in today's video I want to go over the 18 inch hurdles when it comes to both the pair test and the popat test. And I actually, there's one of my earlier videos uh, in terms of the hurdles uh, has talked about how to go over it. And the basic premise is when you're jumping the hurdles, it's not so much about jumping up and over the hurdles, but jumping forward. And the reason we want to do that is to save as much energy as possible. So just a bit of a refresher or for those who have not seen that earlier video, popping up and over would some, look something like this. Whereas jumping forward is going to look something like this. So the difference between the two of them is that in the up and over method, a lot of my force or a lot of where I'm, I'm putting my energy is into the ground and popping straight up. And if I'm popping straight up, it means I have to work against gravity and working against gravity means a lot of energy having to be used. But if I'm jumping forward, putting my energy in this direction, I'm not fighting gravity as much, very minimal at that point. I also am going to be a lot smoother going over top of the hurdles, um, which if I'm smoother means I'm going to save more energy. And if I can save more energy, it means I can use whatever savings from there in other areas that's going to be most important, such as the push-pull machine at the end of the pair test or the machine and the vault at the end of the popat. So remember, the hurdles, you're jumping over it six times. Uh, sorry, 12 times over the course of six laps. And that could be a lot of energy that you're using up. So when we approach these hurdles, don't think about jumping straight up. I know you don't want to knock them down because you will be penalized for it. If it's the pair test, you're going to be, are you going to have two seconds added onto your time? If it's the popat, you have to put the hurdle back in place and re-jump it. So that's extra time involved. But if you're using all that energy to make sure that you're clearing it, you could be losing time elsewhere. So when you will practice the hurdles, and this is something that you can practice anywhere, you don't need the obstacle course itself. Practice having to jump forward versus having to just jump straight up. So when we're jumping forward, it's how you think about it as well. I'm leaning forward into my jump, which allows me to push myself forward. If I stay upright the entire time, then I'm more likely going to do something like this, where I have to jump straight up. But if you lean forward as you're approaching it, you're able to keep that forward momentum going the entire time. Now, the leaning forward is also going to come from the feet, from the back foot, not from leaning forward this way. Otherwise, if I lean forward from here, jump just looks something like this, which is awkward as well. So the force application into the ground should always be in the direction you're going, not popping straight up. So give that a try next time that you're practicing the hurdles. And like I said, you can practice these hurdles anywhere. You do not need the obstacle course itself. All you need are four cones that are 18 inches high, two sticks to put over top, and to place the hurdles 10 feet apart. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment below.